talking cricket now on the Sports Mag Zone. West Indies women went down by five runs under the Duckworth Lewis method to New Zealand in the first of three one dares at the Sir Viv Richard Stadium in Antigua and Barbuda on Monday. The start of the match was delayed due to a wet pitch. The game was then reduced to 35 overs per side. Sent in to bat, the wind is posted 168 for seven. Shinan Henry, who batted at number seven, top scored with 44 from 34 deliveries, while Kai Shona Knight added 36 of 61. The pair added 73 for the sixth wicket. In reply, New Zealand women got to 159 for five when bad light caused an early end to proceedings. Opener Susie Bates led with 51 while Amelia Kerr, she ended on beaten on 47. Haley Matthews claimed three for 28 bowling for the home team. Vernon Springer uh, was on commentary duty. In fact, he's still at the stadium, stayed around dutifully uh, to join us to talk about the game. And he joins us. Springs, we're having uh, this little uh, picture issue. But nevertheless, you're on, the, 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 you're, you're on live and the, the, the folks can see you uh, wherever our broadcast is going. The game today, rain affected the proceedings 34, 35 overs per side. Under the conditions, how well did the wind is bat, first of all? Well, first of all, I think one would have to give some credit to the groundsmen for being able to get the Survivor Region Stadium in time for this first CG United International Series, West Indies Women versus New Zealand Women Series. As you know, Fiona will have passed through the Leeward Islands and gone on to, you know, rather, you know, Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. So for the Bronxmen to be able to get cricket here today, um, I think you have to give them some major credit. In terms of the West Indies batting, one would have to give major credit to Kashana Knight and Chanel Henry scored her highest first class ODI score of 44. You know, really push her on the 83-run partnership. And the senior players today under Haley Matthews, the new West Indies captain, really didn't get off to the spark that they would have liked. And so the West Indies always lost wickets at crucial times. But to get up to 168 for seven or 35 overs, what you watch and his sporting staff would be maybe feel pleased and say, well, hey, we would have done ourselves good justice. What I think happened, George, is that they missed the trick. And if we look at the Reply from New Zealand, they had an opening stand, um, which really kind of set the game up. And that was between the captain, Sophie Devine, and Susie Bates. The West Indies seamers bowled 12 overs, no maiden, 78 runs, one wicket. Now, if you, if, if you match up the comparison you would, you know, to the spinning attack of the West Indies attack, you would see that the West Indies spinners, um, between them, they would have had 21 overs, for 71 runs, four wickets. And it still bemuses me to understand why Taylor didn't bowl. I haven't seen a bowl in the CPL or in the 60. Um, Gatch Nabi didn't bowl, and New Zealand not knowing anything about Gatch Nabi would have been today, would have been an important day to maybe even bring her into the attack. So the West Indies will have to go back to the drawing board because you realize that the New Zealand batters, they like pace on the ball. Spin was the trick today because even if you look at the New Zealand spinners, their spinners um, also contributed and restricted the West Indies down to 67 runs today in picking up a couple of wickets. So I thought in the Haley Matthews' first game as captain, it's something for them to go back and look at. Now these huge boundaries here is a Vibrator Stadium because they did not bring in the boundaries for the game today. Maybe Haley Matthews could have maybe gone for a Gajnabi. If Taylor is not fit to bowl, a Gajnabi would have been a chump card today rather than the Seamers. Yeah. Uh, looking at the scorecard, though, Springs, I, I, I see some, uh, maybe, I don't want to say shoots of optimism, but things that can be interpreted as positives. Because if you look at the number of extras that the West Indies women gave away, they only gave away six. The New Zealanders, they gave away 20. In fact, they had one by three leg buys and 16 wides. And for the Windies women, when they bowled, their six extras came from six wides. So at least from that perspective, yes, the bowling wasn't penetrative. And you spoke about how the spinners leaked runs at the top of the New Zealand order. But in terms of the discipline of the bowling, in terms of landing it in the right sector and being tidy in the field, uh, the Windies women wouldn't have been too bad. And that's something that Walsh and company can build on. But we dropped some crucial catches today also to um, George. And it's something that I feel that in this series here, we're going to have to improve on our feeling uh, because you don't have a DeAndre Dottin. And so not having a DeAndre Dottin in your team as a live wire, I think everybody's going to have to 
lift their game up. And one yeah. of the things which I saw today is that a lot of the West Indian fielders were caught more or less on their heel yes. and not moving in fast so, enough. So, so, so what, so, so, so what does that, what that means that. then, Springs? What that means then is that the, 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 the old cricket, which I've told you from in terms of the free runs that they gave away was quite good, but you say the, the, the catching let them down, at least it's something for Walsh to say, well, you let yourselves down by virtue of the pressure you would have created by being tight in the field in terms of not giving things away like that, but then you let yourselves down with the quality of your catching. I want to ask you quickly, Springs, in the short time we have left, about the night innings, because she made 36 of 61 balls. Amazingly, though, there was only one boundary in that innings was it that she was being anchor and they were trying to uh, try to bat fast around her try to bat aggressive around her and her role was almost sheet anchor-esque because that looked to have been slow going and only one boundary in 61 balls faced it was a very important innings you looking at it from an analysis point of view george you would say to yourself oh she could have done better but you have to take into consideration west in his last four wickets and so when she came in, she was really the last formidable batter, as you would say, for the West Indies women team. And so Shinnell Henry really came into her own today. I thought she ran out of gas. And you can't run out of gas when you're on 44. You have to dig deep, find, find another breath, and be able to come across the line by scoring your first half century, especially at the ODI level. And once she got out, then Knight got out. So I think there, there's some good positives. And I think it will all will go well now to motivate now the rest of the team. There was Charlotte Williams and then Natasha McLean, who's coming back into the fold. And Kelly Matthews, the last time she played against um, New Zealand in the World Cup, she got 100. So as captain now, there's a lot more pressure added on us. So Sir, I'm looking forward to winning this game. Sir Springer, I wanted to ask you something. I noticed at the top of the... Pretty much everyone, the top three, actually got starts, but were unable to carry on. Can you talk to me a little bit about was that a consequence of the pitch, or was that just, you know, what 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 you think was the cause of them not being able to carry on? Of course, Stephanie Taylor eight, Haley Matthews two didn't actually contribute to the bat either. But give me a sense of what the pitch was like to you know for the for the batsmen, especially the opening batters. Well, shot selection. And if, if Rashad Williams got off to a fly, you know Natasha McLean. She, Mata, Natasha McLean is going to play one way. And I just think she just played one shot too many today. It's something which I think they're going to have to curve themselves on. One of the batsmen at the top, From I was surprised that Gajna became a three today. Um, that's a little worry for me in terms of having Taylor and Matthews in the pavilion and Gajna becoming a three. But I guess the coach is trying different things. So. We're not going to blast them out for the first game, but yeah. I'm saying somebody has to back right to the innings and they back into the innings, somebody has to come up with a big score. Yeah, L last thing, Springs, were on borrowed time. Do you see a talent gap between the teams? Yes. Let's look at Amelia Kerr. She's only 21 years of age. And I'm very much, George, concerned about the development of West Indies women's cricket in the region. We need to pay serious attention to the development of what is happening in the territories. 20 seconds, Springs. Gap, Finish it yeah, up in yeah. 20 seconds, yeah. The Canon Gap, need, we, we, they need more help. They need more coaches at that level to bridge that gap between the no doubting, the tailor when she's going to retire. We have to do more with women's cricket in the Caribbean. Hear you on that, my friend. Thank you very much for talking to us under tough circumstances, Vernon Springer. We can always depend on you uh, to put yourself at the service of the Sports Mag Zone and to advance West Indies cricket. Thank you very much, my friend. Break time. Back with Interactive on the Sports Mag Zone after these.